LEGO The Incredibles is a game that often gets overlooked from a speedrunning perspective. The leaderboard is, or should I say was, much emptier than a lot of the older games, even when you do take the release date into account. This is common with a majority of the games that are created on LEGO's 3.0 engine. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2, DC Super Villains, all of these games remained, for the most part, untouched for a long period of time. That's not to say that there weren't dedicated runners giving the games their all, but the activity was pretty scarce. Recently, however, something changed when a runner named T Fresh began a new monthly competition. T Fresh's monthly challenge was created to not only boost activity in the lesser played games, but also to get new runners into LEGO speedrunning in general. Every month, the community is given a new game to tackle, and the runner with the best time at the end of the month is given a cash reward. But here's the interesting thing. This challenge is only available to new runners of a game. That way, current world record holders don't just walk away with all the winnings. This is great for a couple of reasons, but the biggest, most important one for today is that it gives these games a chance to be seen by a fresh set of eyes. Eyes who might be able to try and do things differently than the status quo. It encourages glitch hunting, streaming, and obviously, a lot of practice. And so, in early March of 2023, LEGO The Incredibles would be announced as the new game, and runners got to work very quickly. Before we dive into just how The Incredibles progressed as a speed game, I think it's important that we assess just exactly what you do in an any percent speedrun. Similar to the other LEGO games, the any percent category has you playing through every level in the game, of which there are 12. Where this differs from games we've covered on the channel already, though, is that this game has a world hub. You don't just select your level from a map, you have to travel from point A to point B in the game's hub, and sometimes even solve minor puzzles to progress forward. This takes up a surprising amount of time within the run, and it makes the game very 1P2C heavy, requiring runners to be very adept at playing with two controllers at once. Back in 2018, in the year of the game's release, there were only a handful of runs submitted to the board, and only three of those were in the any% percent category. The very first being done by a runner named Dogi CZ. Being nearly five hours in length, this run was actually part of a bigger 100% run of the game, one that never got finished due to numerous softlocks and crashes taking place. This would then be quickly usurped one day later by BJ Mash Potato, with over an hour's improvement, mostly due to it not being a segment of a 100% run. Though, the game was far from optimized at this point, and after a small improvement from Hugh in that same year, the category would sit dormant for yet another year. There, the time would be slowly chipped away by two runners, known as Zero the Hero and Snollid Ice. Their constant trading of the record back and forth would last all the way to 2021. While a majority of the time saves seen by Snollid and Zero can be chalked up to the legalization of 1P2C, there was another thing that helped shave a few minutes off of the time. A weird new way to clip out of bounds and end levels early. This trick, first utilized by Zero, has you picking up any character as Mr. Incredible, then dropping him out so the other players can clip behind and even through walls. In one once case, you can clip Elastigirl out of bounds and use her glide to hit a trigger that completes the level automatically, which skips the entire second half. This same clip technique can be used at multiple points in the run, notably in a level called Golden Years where it's used two different times, and in the final level, where you can skip the boss fight at the end by clipping into the rubble in the back of the room and hitting an out-of-bounds door. This type of trick is very powerful, not only in its practical use, but also in its application. If there were end-level triggers just floating out of bounds, the potential time save was incredible, and all that was left to do was find them. But despite that, the most recent record set in that category was this same run by Zero, at a time of 1.56.57, the game's first ever sub-2. The glitch hunting continued on, but there was nothing substantial to note quite yet. And things would remain that way, until a few years later on March 7th, at the genesis of T Fresh's monthly challenge. Right when this challenge was announced, we meet this video's main character, 
is someone a few of you might be familiar with, Sedum Naztec. There's no fitting way to introduce this runner, as it would genuinely be faster to list off the things he hasn't done in LEGO speedrunning. He's one of the best LEGO Indiana Jones speedrunners, holds nearly every main board category in LEGO Harry Potter years 5-7, through seven, is top 3 in 1-4, through four, and even top 10 in the complete saga's any percent, which is easily the most competitive and contested LEGO game by far. And that's not even the half of it. So when he sent the very first message of the day in the LEGO Incredibles chat, it was inevitable that this game would be pushed all the way to its limits. It would take less than two days for Seed to find something that completely turned this game on its head. Starting with something that nobody had ever thought of before. Remember those end-level doors found inside levels? Well, forget about those. We're gonna go even bigger. See, a lot of those doors were found by a glitch hunter named Lava Fang, but he had only ever looked inside of levels for doors like that. What about looking for doors in the game's overworld? This led Seed to some very interesting results, and to the conclusion that every single one of the game's 12 levels can be accessed off of a fresh save file. Every single zone that loads you into a level, albeit blocked off, can still be accessed out of bounds. This began with level 10, where he was able to get out of bounds as Frozone and hit a trigger that immediately starts the level. When he finished, the game had counted every previous mission as complete, as well as gave him every character he would have had unlocked by this point. Going from level 1 to level 10 was pretty big, since it allowed runners to skip 8 full levels in the any% percent category, taking the time down to an estimated 37 minutes. So obviously, the next logical step would be to try and find doors for each level even later in the run. Unfortunately though, it looked as if the doors for level 11 and 12 were located beneath the game's kill plane, meaning that you couldn't get low enough to access it without dying. For the time being, this is how things would stay. I think it's important that we sidebar for a moment and explain why this is allowed in the any% percent speedrun. As the name suggests, you can finish the game with any percent of the file completed, and still have your run be valid. All that needs to happen is for you to get to the intended ending of the game. Once you lose control of your character, the timer ends. So, in a game like this, all that needs to happen for a run to fulfill the any% percent requirements is to beat level 12, called the Final Showdown. Already, getting the time down to around 40 minutes was impressive enough, but there had to be something else. And if there's anything we've learned about LEGO speedrunners, it's that they don't settle. By some stroke of luck, as it turns out, the doors to both level 11 and 12 are not underneath a kill plane, and are still very much accessible during the run, just really hard to hit. This cuts out both 10 and 11 from the run, leaving the category with just two levels you need to finish. As the current route goes, you would beat 1-1 using the end level trigger. Clip outside of the Par household as Frozone, and glide along the deloaded hub world, hitting various checkpoints along the way. The first place you stop being at Edna's, where you immediately do another out of bounds clip and end up way below her house, inside of. Well, to be honest, I haven't watched these movies in years, so I don't really know what this area is, but it's not like it matters. Because one more clip as Elastigirl, and you're now inside of level 12, the final showdown. Beat the boss, call your time, and you've now performed one of LEGO's biggest skips. I'm sure the world's record will have changed hands quite a bit by the time this video is published. But it's now gotten to a point where runners don't even bother with unlocking Frozone, and instead just YOLO the clip as Elastigirl. But that isn't necessarily the end of our story. While this video may be close to over, there's potential for similar things to be found in the other 3.0 games. Since they were all developed on the same engine, it's likely that developers took similar shortcuts across the games. 
Maybe there's even greater potential in a game like Marvel Super Heroes 2, or even DC Super Villains, but only time will tell. If you're looking for an excuse to learn how to speedrun LEGO games, this is your cue. You've got a couple more weeks of this monthly challenge, and since it's open to primarily new runners of the game, everyone's got a shot. I'm also contributing an extra $50 to the first place winner, creating a grand total of $100 to the fastest Incredibles run by April. If you think you've got what it takes, a link to the LSR Discord will be down below. Happy running, and I'll see you next week.